Today, I'm gonna use the newest member of the Intel stock cooler family with plastic cod piece and all to abuse various 12th gen Intel CPUs. But before then, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Thermaltech and their Tower 100 series of ITX cases that come in a fancy assortment of colors so that you can easily match it with your dog. The Tower 100 cases come with a butt ton of ventilation so that your system doesn't have to run hot. There's also plenty of space for a big GPU, a tower cooler, and even a normal ATX power supply. Mm. Other than that, you've got three tempered glass panels so that you have like a display case with your little gaming PC in it, which looks awesome. If this looks good to you, check out the Thermaltake Tower 100 linked in the description below. Thank you, Thermaltake, for sponsoring today's video. Now the new generation of Intel stock cooler may look a lot better than the previous generation, but in terms of actual cooling features, they've only made minor upgrades. The fin stack only looks slightly bigger than the previous generation, although they did make a return to the copper contact puck in the center of the cooler, which may help, uh, but still, this is not a very good CPU cooler, which makes it perfect for some CPU torture. Now how we're going to go about our CPU drip torture for today is we're going to start with a reasonable CPU pairing for the new Intel stock cooler. And then we're going to slowly work our way up to the daddy of the range. Uh, now I'm going to use the build behind me here for these tests, which is a build I did a couple videos back, although there are a couple of small changes I need to make to it so that it'll work for our tests. The first change I'm going to make is replace the RX 6600 XT with an RTX 3080 Ti, just so that the CPU has to work as hard as possible to keep up in gaming loads. Now considering that for the tests we're going to use the 3080 Ti, I am going to have to swap out the power supply in that Intel build, uh, and I'm going to use this absolute absolute beefcake dark power that was sent over by Be Quiet. I actually think this is the most badass power supply I've ever seen in the flesh. It is 80 plus titanium rated, which as we know brings all the boys to the yard, and it just looks generally very badass, so let's, let's fawn at it a little bit. Ooh, shiny. Nice. Now I didn't know this was something I wanted, but look at the thumb screws that come with this power supply to mount it. Nice. Okay, so with that very technical breakdown out of the way, let's drop this bad boy into that system and start our testing. Now, I've run into a bit of a weird problem with Battlefield 5. Uh, the GPU is too powerful. So at 1080p, we kept running into the, uh, the engine limit of 200 frames per second, which is also happening at 1440p. Uh, this is with all ultra settings. Uh, although the CPU is working harder. So we do occasionally hit about 80% CPU utilization. Oh, 90, uh, which is very high for a gaming load. Um, and with that, we have in the mid 60s in terms of CPU temp. Uh, depending on what's going on in the scene. So aside from its characteristic howl, with a low ambient temperature, it can kind of handle a 12400F while gaming. Interestingly, the temperature has only got mildly worse with a more CPU intensive load like Cinebench. With that, I think this is a good point to start abusing some bigger CPUs. Now, in order to more effectively emasculate the new Intel stock cooler, we're moving up the CPU food chain a little bit to this, which is the 12600K. This can overclock and draws a whole lot more power than the 12400. So let's see what the stock cooler makes of this. Oh, how's that for build quality? Look at that, beautiful. Now, in order to minimize you bullying me in the comment section, I'm going to blur the process of me removing the cooler from the CPU, because I definitely didn't spend like 35 minutes struggling to get it off. Yes. Oh, Intel, that's not a very convincing contact patch you have there. We're gonna remove the pathetic little 12400. And we're going to replace it with the Herculean 12600K. So we've been playing Battlefield 5 for a while, and I've actually figured out that if you set the uh, max frame rate to the monitor's refresh rate, you can actually get above 200 frames per second at 1080p. And uh, this is with the 12600K drawing about 90-ish watts of power, and we're jumping around in the 80s. So it's getting hotter, 
it's quite noisy and uh, it's struggling. And another thing, the 12600K is not running that fast and we're, we're still getting quite high temperatures. So this is definitely not a good pairing at all, um, especially noise wise. Uh, but, you know, it's it's handling it relatively fine. Although, when moving over to Cinebench, the temperatures quickly sprinted to 100 degrees Celsius, which does not bode particularly well for, for our next CPU. So I think, instead of just overclocking the 12600K, I think we should just step it up to the next level. Now we need to quickly mutilate our thumbs to swap out that pathetic 12600K for the big daddy. Oh no, it's already pegged at 100 degrees Celsius. We are seeing the core frequency drop because, well, the 12900K is drawing over 110 watts and that's just too much for the little Intel cooler. Although, like I've seen uh, in previous videos where we had the 12900K run at quite high temperatures, it does tank it like a chad. Like the, <laughs> the 12900K does not seem to mind. The core frequency is not doing amazing, but we're pretty much pegged at 240 frames per second. It is not very stuttery at all. And if I didn't have monitoring software up, I probably wouldn't have realized that our CPU is about to set fire to Indonesia. But I, I have an idea, let's try something. Let's see what happens when we unshackle the CPU from motherboard imposed temperature limit protection. It was, it was sitting at 100 degrees before, so let's see how far it lets us go. I mean, unfortunately, that's not as high as the 120C that an NZXT motherboard would let us go, but that is higher, so let's, let's see what happens with that. That feels really weird to do. See, with the additional temperature headroom, the CPU keeps trying to stay at 4.9... Oh, 110! Uh, oh. Apparently the 12900K does not like running at 110 degrees Celsius. <laughs> okay, so out of curiosity, I did a little bit of undervolting and well, we're already at 100 degrees Celsius. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's really helped much. The average core frequency does seem to be a little bit higher, but interestingly at the same time, we're also drawing more power. So I guess it's running marginally better, but we're still sitting cranked at 100 degrees Celsius. So does it, does it really matter? So we've learned a couple things today. If you have an ambient temperature below 14 degrees Celsius and you don't have ears, I guess the new Intel stock cooler is not as bad as I was expecting. And another thing we learned is that the 12900K is worse than the 10900K because it refuses to run at a sustained 120 degrees Celsius. And with that, thank you for watching and until the next video, bye bye.